All righty. We got Ryan joining the show from Locked In Badgers. And Ryan, thank you for spending some time with me. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. No, humbled that you reached out. I'm excited to be here. Like I, I, we said before the show, you got some bangers as guests. So I feel like you're Appreciate almost bumming it with me. Um, I think I'm <laughs> following up after you had free tag on. So like, yeah, I don't know why you, you reached out to me with your Rolodex. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I was telling you off the show, I enjoy the work you, you, you do. I, I enjoy the energy, the vibe, and I thought it'd be a fun collaboration and, and to pick your brain a little bit. And you're an interesting guy because uh, your sports teams, let's start there because yes. I, I got it written down. We got Badgers, Niners, Suns, Braves. You went to Connecticut School of Broadcasting. You, you know, you're hitting like every yeah. area of the United States. Um, how, how, why are you a fan of the teams? How did that come about? That's and uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I'll give you the 30, the one minute rundown. Um, Let's born, do it. I was born in Tucson. So my dad lives in Tucson still. That's where the Suns come in. I remember watching the sure. 93, 94 finals with him when MJ broke our heart or 92, 93. Sorry. So that's, that's the Suns fandom. Been a Suns fan my entire life through the, the thick and the thin. 1.1% of the gall to call, call me a bandwagon fan because of the Suns. I'm like, bro, the Suns have never won a title. There are no bandwagon Phoenix Suns fans. Stop it. Yeah. Um, Moved to Wisconsin with my mom when my parents kind of split up, became a Badger fan. Kind of obvious there. You grew up in state. Um, yeah. Because I was in Wisconsin, I had a massive – I hated Minnesota. I was just kind of born – I like. I grew up in that culture. You don't like anything from across the state. So 1991 World Series, sure. Braves and Twins are playing. I cheer for the Braves because they're playing the Twins. Uh, so the border rivalry, rivalry actually led me to being a Braves fan. been a Braves fan ever since. And then the Niners one's a little more, um, I guess, interesting. But my mom said it's because I had a babysitter when I was young who I had a crush on, and she was a Niners fan. And, like, that was it. That's it. So <laughs> That's hilarious. That's the story. Um, and Connecticut School Broadcasting, I'm in Connecticut now, so I was just trying to kind of get a little better in that area. And I was there, so I did it. Good deal. No, 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 it's interesting. And another interesting thing about you is you were in the Navy uh, for nine years as a submariner. And – um my question for you is, what are some things that you picked up in the Navy that you still apply to your day-to-day -day life here? And, and, and thank you for your service, first and foremost. I want to say thank you for your service. But uh, yeah, what are some things that you picked up that you still apply to your day-to-day -day life? Oh, that's a great question. And you're welcome. Like The Navy was great for me. Uh, I needed it. I think the biggest thing is being on a submarine, what people don't realize is, unless you've been on one, how tight those quarters are. I mean, I was in a bedroom it would be a small bedroom but for a house it's called a, like a bunk room nine nine grown men shared that with me like that's <laughs> we, we slept like literally in sardines right so you learn really yeah. quickly to get along with people and I, I think that's those people skills of just understanding everybody's coming from a different place you know the navy's full of people from all across the country different demographics um living with a group of people underwater for three months at a time and never stepping foot on land never going anywhere else, never having an outside conversation, you really need to learn, like, we're all we're all people and we're all doing the best we can with what we have. I think that has helped me the most. It, it's given me a better ability to, I think, connect with people, probably communicate with people, um, deal with people. I think that's, yeah, I think that's the number one skill I got out of the Navy. Sure. And, and then talk about how do you end up getting this uh, locked on Badgers gig down the road? Yeah, so I've always, I mean, we talked about it, like, we're all sports fans, so I've always been a huge sports fan. Um, the funny thing is people will say, like, man, uh, what are you doing this for? Like, how'd you get that? They don't realize I've had, like, five sports podcasts, and all of them have failed spectacularly, right? <laughs> but the point is, you just keep going. Like, if you want something, just keep yeah. doing it. Like, just keep trying. Like, I had a, a sports co podcast uh, talking college football with my buddy Chris Grace, another one talking Badgers with my buddy Mike Millman, uh, like, None of them really went anywhere, but you just keep, if you, there's a path you want, just keep going down it, right? And eventually there's going to be an exit on that path that leads to something you really want to do. So that, that was kind of it. I just kept doing different sports podcasts. And then Justin Jolka, who obviously people know, um, we, we did, and um, we did the, this Badger podcast, locked on, eventually reached out and said, hey, we want someone to fill this. And that's kind of how it got started. But that wasn't really the start, right? The start was years and years and years yeah. of like trying different things and just being like, I'm passionate about this. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to put energy into it. And if you do that, things come out of that generally. Sure. No, and that's inspiring for me, you know, as I, as I try to build this, I mean, yeah, just keep going, just keep going. It's, it's, it's not easy. Like any, anything, anything good in life, it's, it's not going to come easy. So yeah, congrats on getting to where you are now. And then, just pivoting to some Badger basketball here. Um, 
general thoughts. General thoughts from last night's game. Oh my gosh. Um, there, there, there's a lot. <laughs> I mean, here's where, here's where I would start. Like general thoughts. I never think we're. And I say we. I'm I'm a fan who uses we. I know some people don't like that, but that's that's where I'm at. I, I generally think we're never as bad as our worst how we look at the low and we're never as good as we, as we look at the high. So I do think coming off of that loss and coming off this stretch, people are, are really apocalyptic with it, right? Like this is terrible. But if you zoom out, if these losses were spread out through the season, instead of everything in February, maybe the Nebraska collapse was a couple months ago. And instead the Michigan state win was in February. I just think the totality of the season isn't as bad as we've looked in February. Um, that being yep. said, February was a disaster. That's a trend that's not acceptable. And I think Greg Gard has to finish the season strong to reinstill some confidence among fans, probably among people in the, the department, right? I think he needs yeah. to do that, but I'm not all the way on the, the end where a lot of people are, where they're like, I'm done with Gard. I'm just not there quite yet because, again, the totality of the season is not what March is and vice versa. Yeah, no, a lot can change. A lot can change. And, and I'm with you. I'm kind of in a similar place where there's definitely the, – I don't like the trend in recent years where Wisconsin – Looks like a different team in November and December than they do January, February, and March. Like last year, I was like, oh, it was Wall's injury. Like everything changed after Wall's injury. But we saw it in 2020, 2021, you know, with the, the uh, Potter Trice team where they, mm -hmm. they fizzled. In 21, 22, they won a lot of close games. But I mean, you know, Johnny became, went, came back down to earth. Brad went through a cold spell. It just, yeah, just Wisconsin's in recent years has just looked like a different team late in the season where I know it's Big Ten. Uh, it's a lot of rock fights. They know each other well, but just the, uh, this trend is a little concerning. So I think Saturday, Saturday is obviously huge, but give me some, um, something to be optimistic in the recent games. Has there been anything you've seen that, that makes you optimistic moving forward? Yeah, no, absolutely. Again, I never feel like it's, it's all one or the other, right? I think, I think to play a John Blackwell, if you want to look for something that you, you want to get excited about Badger fans, Blackwell is a stud. Uh, I he's got yeah. to clean up, but his ability to come off the bench and play like a grown man should get Badger fans super excited. Like, obviously, we missed him with that hip injury. And I mm -hmm. thought he was maybe the most poised player on the team uh, outside of maybe um, Chucky in, in the Indiana game. Yeah. So I, I think that's an absolute positive. Like, Greg Gard found a star in Blackwell. Blackwell is going to be a star type college player over the next several years as he continues to grow into that role. Um, so I, that's the first thing that sticks out to me. Um, I'm curious on your thoughts too. Like, what are you looking at here? That's a lighthouse in this storm. Cause I do think there are things that are, are positive if you want to look for it. Well, I'll go. Well, first and foremost, I'll say Chucky Hepburn to me has been a huge bright spot because I was getting really uh, bearish on Chucky where it's very hard for this Wisconsin team. Cause in 2024, we've consistently had lineups where you have four guys who aren't threats to shoot just statistically speaking on the season maybe in the past they have been but Chucky in five of the last six games has made at least two threes which which is massive and he shot 44 percent from three in the last six games which I I think is huge I think Wisconsin goes as far as Chucky takes them and I was getting to the point where I was like I almost feel like you have to just limit Chucky's minutes I know guard loves Chucky so that's never going to happen but I was getting to the point where it's like like teams can just go under on the screen and that that's really tough to have a point guard to, to make a deep run and to beat good teams having a point guard where you can go under the screen you don't have to respect offensively so I think Chucky's offense coming to life and he was a warrior last night Chucky was an absolute dog um I, I was super impressed I, I imagine like he's probably the most deflated one of that locker room because he left it all on the court last night um so I, I've been really pleased with Chucky I think I think this team goes as far as Chucky takes them because we've seen in the past like I remember uh, in 2022, Chucky had like five or six three-pointers against Marquette. Then the next game, he had five or six three-pointers against Wake Forest. And it's like, where is this guy? Like, we, we, we've seen it. So I think that, for me, is the biggest uh, bright spot. And then John Blackwell, obviously, is another one. Um, and, and a few games back, Nolan Winter started making some threes, which was big. Um, but and, and then I also, you know, Wisconsin won the Rock fights at home against Ohio State and Maryland. I liked the Iowa game. People were really upset about the defense, but I thought – same with Indiana. I think a lot of a lot of it, you know, defense could be better, but I don't think it's as bad as people think. I think that um, I think both Indiana and Iowa have bucket getters, or at least against Wisconsin, they have bucket getters. Like, like they they made some tough shots, and I just tip my cap to to each team where um, they, they they made shots when they needed to. Uh, Ware dominated Crowell. 
Um, so yeah, I, I, I've I've seen some bright spots. The Saturday game is going to be massive. Uh, but yeah, uh, what what do you think about Wisconsin turning it around? What are the biggest things for you for Wisconsin to turn it around? I honestly, this sounds so cliche because I think a lot of fans go right to this when there's a team in a losing streak. But I, I really, I think they just got to play with a little more heart. Like, I that sounds so silly, right? And I'm not here trying to question anybody's heart, but there's there's some plays in that Indiana game where it's 50 50 balls under the rim, and Indiana yeah. is just dislodging Stephen Crow, dislodging the yeah. wall. Like, you got to get over a screen better. Like, if you're going to play the drop coverage, some of that's on Steven Growl. Like, you got to show a little harder. Or, I mean, you got to contest that mid range a little bit better, get back a little quicker. But Chucky, for all the love, and Chucky, this isn't all on Chucky because he plays a ton of minutes, right? It would be helpful yeah. if you could get a little bit more rest, but he's got to get all over those screens a little bit better, too, because he's putting mm. Growl in no man's land, right? That's heart stuff. Like, you got to just want it. And I, I think there's an element to this. That's, and I don't know the best way to phrase it, but that's frustrating me a little bit. Like, it, this is too veteran of a team to have a prolonged slump, right, in my opinion, which is what February was. And that's that's why you have a veteran team in college basketball, right, to, to not go in these slumps, to have leadership in the tough moments. And it feels like it snowballed a little bit. Um, and that part of it's frustrating and a little confusing to me. So I think when you start with Keys, I just think they, they got to get after it a little bit more. They're a more talented team than a lot of these teams they've lost to. But for whatever reason, it feels like yeah. they've now worked a little bit. Yeah, no, I I can see that. I I I can definitely see that, and I think part of that heart goes into the slow starts. Like, why does it take getting down by fifteen to to light a fire under you? Mm -hmm. I I I just the the consistent slow starts is is kind of mind blowing. Um, but I I also think like Stephen Crow, like I I think he has, and this isn't even really a knock. This is just I think his personality, where he's not an aggressive like hyper dog mentality guy like it seems like guard really has to be consistent to try getting him to be aggressive but Crowell's inconsistency and I think it's just kind of his personality but I, I think Crowell's inconsistency is, is a big hindrance to this team right now where he he looks great one moment but then the next moment he you know he, he's nowhere to be found like like that Nebraska game he seemed timid and he's a senior and, and really I thought the guards played fine for Wisconsin he had four guards and double figures against Indiana my problem was the fifth-year senior Tyler Wall and the old senior. I think Crowell's turning twenty-three, like relatively soon. Um, like, I they they were the ones who were the problem for me in that game. Yeah, I think it's very fair. I, people get on me because they I defend Stephen Crowell often. I feel like in people every time Crowell has a bad game, and that that Indiana game was a terrible game for Stephen Crowell. Like, there's no excuses, right? He where shot what eleven or twelve, right? If if yeah. not all that again. <laughs> Now, this is where, though, people can look at a box score, just watch a game and say, he shot, well, two of those dunks are on dribble penetration where Crowell has to help over, and they, they lob the ball to where, and then he's not guarding yeah. anybody, right? That's not on Crowell. That's on the guards getting beat off the perimeter. Um, two or three of those those where's plays are on that pick-and-roll coverage, right, which is a combination of Chucky and Crowell. So, like, it's – I caution people when they say Crowell gave up 11 or 12. Well, no, the defense did, and a lot of times Crowell's rotating over to stop dribble penetration – and then Ware gets a dump off dunk. Like that's not on Stephen Crowell. But no, like he did not play well enough in that game. I 100 percent agree with you. He was inconsistent. Wall got in foul trouble. Um, I'm always a little iffy on listen, you gotta stay out of foul trouble, you gotta be on the court. Uh, but I think when Wall Wall was out there, he felt more aggressive than Crowell. Crowell felt timid, he felt like Ware took him out of his game a little bit. Um, and I don't know the answer to that because to your point, I think you're dead on that that's who Stephen Crowell is. And you're not going to there's a lot of players like that, right? Like there's a lot of players who just don't have that fanatical energy inside them for whatever reason. Yeah. It's just not who they are. I don't think you can put that in somebody. I don't think Greg Gard can put that into yeah. Stephen Crowell. Oh, I agree. I, I agree. And and I, I think that I, I like Crowell's game too. I like Crowell's game too, but it's just, he's got to consistently, he's got to find it in him just to be consistently aggressive and, and, and kind of a sleeper thing where, I mean, he only played, what, 10 minutes per game? But I think Kamari McGee is the guy who's got that dog in him. Yeah. He just brings that energy. And, I, you know, Chucky's playing a lot of minutes. I think McGee, Missy McGee, low-key, uh, has hurt Wisconsin. At the beginning of the year, I never thought I would say that. I never thought I would say that uh, Wisconsin needed McGee. But I, I think McGee is the guy who, one, just brings a positive energy, a positive vibe, and he just he goes hard. So I think that's a guy who Wisconsin will welcome back in, with open arms. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think? Do you, do you think McGee's, you know, what stinks about it is like McGee's been out so long. Now he's going to be thrust upon like 
in these big games. Like if he comes back at Purdue, comes back in the Big Ten tournament, I don't know how much of an impact he can have. It's super interesting because I I never would have, to your point, I am 100% with you, man. I never would have said, oh, my gosh, you lost Kamari McGee. The wheels are going to fall off. <laughs> like that's wild. But it feels like that's what happened. I think you're totally right, though. I think he brings energy off the bench, right? He brings energy. And he gives you, by the way, low-key, he gives you quickness off the bench, which his team lacks. Oh, yeah, he can really move his feet yep. well laterally. So it's not just energy. It's it's He gives you a weapon against really quick guards that the Badgers at times have trouble guarding, right? So you can bring him out there and, and play a little more aggressive defensively on the perimeter with a guy like that. I think that's a, a – like it's it's a weapon in the toolbox for a great guard that he doesn't have. But I also agree he brings energy. However, the, the flip side to that, I would say if your roster is dependent on a Kamari McGee, if, if, no you know, like, then your roster is not deep enough either. And that's on Greg Gard. Yeah. Like there is a depth issue on this team. It shouldn't be we lost Kamari McGee. Now, now yeah. we, like that's that's not a big loss. Like you look around college basketball, teams lose bigger pieces than Kamari yeah, McGee and don't no doubt. with tailspin. So to me, that's indicative of a depth problem. And that's something Gard has struggled with for years. Like, the Badgers haven't had, had a, they had a really bad bench last year too. Right? It's been a few years before, yeah. since the Badgers. You could say, I really like the top three guys coming off the bench. They're impactful players. Guards got to recruit yeah. more depth. Oh, I, I I totally agree. I, the bench through and guards entire tenure has been pretty bad. Like mm-hmm. like there there's been years like before the the portal became a thing, just like finding a grad transfer to. I didn't understand why. Like that, like a random name to throw out there is Arians from UWM, like in sixteen seventeen, like that. That Badger team needed some depth, mm-hmm. and they, they were very close to, to making like a Final Four. Um, but I, yeah, it, it's it's been every single year. I, I this bench with Blackwell, um, yeah, I mean Blackwell by himself makes this one of the best benches, uh, the guards ever had. Um, you know, but here's the so, scary thing, right? Like it might just be him. Like it, if McKee yeah. hurt, Connor is not isn't. For whatever reason, and that's the whole thing we could get into or not, totally up to you. But Connor's not playing, essentially. And Winter is in- incredibly inconsistent. We know what Carter Gilmore is, the good and the bad. Like, literally, some nights the bench is Blackwell, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's one of Guard's best benches, like, like straight up. <laughs> <was> like, so <laughs> terrible. Like, like, can you think of a better bench? Like, you could say the Johnny Davis as a freshman and Nate Reavers, but that year was pretty ugly. Um, like, I, I, I would have to. Look, I mean, this bench is better than nineteen twenty, maybe. maybe? Nineteen twenty. Well, 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 then, well, Colby left, and then I think Pritzel started. So I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's tough, but yeah, the the benches, and then every year you hear with guard saying, "I, I don't have enough minutes for all the players I have." <laughs> it just, it's it funny. just, it, yeah, it, it looks good for like three games. Like, oh yeah, we have a lot of depth, but no. No, they really don't. But no. uh, and then you look up and Chucky's playing thirty-seven minutes, right? And you're like, oh, well, yeah, not the exactly. Game. So, uh, what do you make uh, in recent years? Just talking about how Wisconsin looks like a different team in uh, no- November, December into January. Then they go through these skids where they just can't hit the broad side of the barn. They're shooting twenty-eight percent from three in the month of February. And what do you make of this like consistent like regression? Mm-hmm. to 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 like the mean under guard do you think uh like do you think guard as i'm playing too tense where they're not playing confident enough do the players just have to man up a little bit be a little mentally tougher oh uh, well, what's your theory why does wisconsin keep on going through these these droughts where it looks like they're timid and scared to put up a shot yeah i think it's a good question um i actually i think i'm a little more on an island on this one than a lot of people i think there's a general notion that guard struggles to adapt, right? And other teams adapt to the Badgers and the Badgers kind of stay stagnant. I don't think it's as much that. Honestly, I think there's an element of just statistical noise here. Like, I, I think there's an element of just randomness here. I mean, you look back to the Johnny Davis year, I think that team is going to make a run if Davis doesn't get hurt. Like, I, I think injuries play a huge part in it, right? Like, the Tyler Wall year, I think they were humming and then Tyler Wall got hurt. And then he went, I, I mean, I talked to him. He When he came back, he said it was like 70%. I think that threw the team. Yeah. Up. You know, like injuries will do that. And then I think it goes back, though, to the one thing we did just talk about. I think it's injuries and then it's a lack of depth. So I think your starters get worn down. I really think it's as simple as that. Because here's the thing. Great guard's not doing anything exotic. He doesn't come out at the beginning of the year, throw some crazy schemes out there, and people are like, what is he doing? Then we go, and it takes them like yeah. a month to adapt, and then they adapt. Like, teams know what great guard's doing. They come into the season ready for it. So it's it's not an element of, like, great guard surprise somebody and then teams adapted to him. 
I just think it's a combination of the depth isn't strong enough. Players get worn down. And then when you have that key injury because the depth isn't there, you look like a different team. And I think that's happened multiple times in Gard's career. And I think the answer is you got to recruit better depth, right? And then you got to just get lucky with injuries, which that's always, who knows, right? You can't do anything about that. Yeah. All right. No, that's interesting. That's interesting. It makes sense to me. Um, moving on to my next topic here, Illinois. Well, where's your head at heading into that matchup? Um, and I, I think this one, obviously every game's important. Everyone says, oh, this is a must win. But this really feels like a must win for the morale. Like, I, I, I had the end of this week was saying, like, I feel like this is the most important week of the season to see what this Wisconsin team is made of because they've been through this game. Do they give, like, yeah, do they, do they give themselves, do they give the fans, the coaching staff, do they give a reason to be confident? And I think you go over this week against Indiana and Illinois, I – I have a hard time picturing them turning around. I feel like they need this win just for the morale's sake. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I, I think this is a big, this is a big like fulcrum type game where like that season's kind of balancing, right? And uh, this could this could nose that pretty quickly. Like, uh, yeah, I, I think it's big. You get them at home. I mean, it's it shouldn't be lost in anyone that really that this spate of Badger losses have all really been road contests outside of that Purdue game. And Wisconsin played Purdue really well at home. Like that, they, that was one of their better efforts recently. Um, so, you know, you get them at home. I feel strangely confident about the game. I probably shouldn't be, but I, I think they played, they just play different at home. They, they, they play more consistently. They play with energy. And here's the other thing I'd say, like, I'm tired of saying like uh, this team is going to respond, right? It's a veteran team. They've taken a couple losses. It feels like that hasn't been the case. And eventually you are who you are, but this yeah. don't feel like a moment where if this team's going to respond, this is the game. Like home game, yeah. ring team should be a big environment. You can still play yourself into a better seed. There's a lot on the line for this game for Wisconsin. So I feel pretty, given the circumstances in the recent games, I feel pretty good about it. But I mean, that's about as far as I can go. <laughs> do, do you think the home crowd stands up more than one time in the first half? <laughs> What's the over under here? Are you, are you taking more than one or? <laughs> I'm going to take, if I could push, I would. Um, I'm going to take over. Like, I think Chucky, I, I don't know, man. Like, I still weirdly believe that this team is better than Badger fans think it is, right? I, I think it's been a weird month, but don't, it's super easy to forget the first part of the season when you, 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 you know, beat Marquette, you led Michigan State wire to wire. Like, um, you played pretty well with Tennessee, you know, like that team is still here too. That's not, like the first half of the basketball season at times has a tendency to feel like 1904, right? Like, oh, mm. I barely remember that team. No, that team is still here. Like that yeah. is still here. Um, and I think playing at home gets them back closer to that version of it. So I think it, I'm going to take the over. I'm going to take two. I'm going to take two. It's going to be a okay. big and three and maybe a store dunk. Okay. There we go. There we go. We'll, we'll see if the old people will, uh, will, will make you happy there. But so. uh, uh, yeah, so – no one on Illinois is under 6'6 in, in the starting lineup. Um, and obviously, they're led by Terrence Shannon and Marcus Domask. Um, who do you want guarding Shannon? And who do you want guarding Domask? Oh, man. Shannon's a tough one, right? Like, And before you answer, I think Shannon is one of the best athletes. We, I, I think he, I'm going to make the argument. I don't know if I've ever seen a fifth-year senior as athletic as Terrence Shannon. And I think, like, He's one of the best athletes a Big Ten has seen in, in recent memory. Like him and Jaden Ivey are the two guys I put on a pedestal. Just like not only just vertical, but I just mean like lateral quickness, like straight line burst. Um, he, he's a freaky athlete, but like proceed. Yeah, no, I'm curious where you're at on this one. Because I, I think this presents some interesting problems with the Badgers and the, and the size they are in certain spots. Yeah. Like yeah, I would go. Uh, I would go Klesman on, on Shannon over Store, and and I, I can't think of uh, who the small forward is. And then I would go Chucky on Domask. Let me let me get the. Is his name Goody? Yeah, yeah. I think it's Luke Goody is the fifth starter. He's six six. I, I would probably put Store on him. That'd be it. And then I, when Blackwell's in the game, he can contribute on Shannon. You can give Store a shot. You know, he's got the length and athleticism. But uh, yeah, I'll probably start Klesman. I'll probably start Klesman. I mean. Yeah, Shannon's got some length and some athleticism mm -hmm. on Klesman, but I would that'd probably be the guy I'd, I'd throw on him. And I think Klesman does have experience with them. The, the big thing is, luckily, you don't have to put Connor Siegen on a 6'10, fifth year senior like they did last year with uh, Matthew True. Meyer. So, 
It's true. I, I think that I think that works. I mean, this is the case where you wish Store was a little more consistent defensively because he's really the matchup that you would like on Shannon. Yeah, like like, like, like on paper, yes, yeah. yes. And I feel like that's kind of what they were hoping to get a little bit more from him this year when they brought him in. Like, like I, I, I'm of the opinion that Store's been great. Like he's been he's delivered for the most part. But um, Shannon, so I think I think you're probably right though. I like Klesman on him because Klesman's so smart. Klesman understands what Shannon's going to try to do. He does a really good job with film study. He takes away typically what players are trying to do, and he's going to negate yeah. a little of that athleticism. But I think the Badgers are, they're going to have some issues there. And quite frankly, again, this is a team that struggled defending on the perimeter. So I don't. I think it's a situation where you probably don't have a bunch of good answers. You do the best you can, and then yeah. you know. So yeah. Well. But it won't be as bad as it was last year. Uh, thank oh, gosh. Thankfully, last year it was it was, it was uh, rough sailing to, to say the least. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, if you were advising AJ Store looking at his draft stock, and and and, and I will say this is. People talk about how the NBA loves youth, but I, I want to throw in this caveat. You have, um, and this, you know, exception to the rule, whatever, but but Shannon's a guy, you know, he's got the sexual assault allegations, but Shannon's a guy who's a fifth-year senior, went from a second-round pick. I, I don't know what his stock is now, but before it was, he was looking like a lottery pick on draft boards. And then you had fifth-year senior uh, Dalton Connect from Tennessee, oh, so undrafted if he would have went after last year. He's a top-five pick. Yeah. So. I, 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 that's where I'm like, I don't think it'd be the end of the world for store to come back for one more year and then, you know, try to ha- take that jump like Shannon and, and connected in their fifth years. But yeah, if you were advising store, should he stay or should he go? I would tell him to test the water. Like if I'm his agent, I, yeah, I, I agree. I would I agree say, with that. bro, test the water and see if anybody's biting, right? Throw the lure out there. Yeah. I, Cause that's what I'm always going to say. If, if you can go make millions of dollars and you can get coached by the best coaches in the world with the best facilities in the world, go do it. Unless you love college, like everybody's different, right? I'm never, money's not the driving force for everybody. And NILs change mm. the equation somewhat. So I would, because there's going to be the, the pre draft combine, you can put your name into to certain things now in the NBA and not lose your eligibility. So I would say test the waters. Do I think he's ready? No. I've said that on the show. I, I think there's an athletic package there, but the shooting isn't consistent enough. I don't think he's a good enough, like, secondary uh, playmaker. Like, he can beat people off the dribble, but after he doesn't have, like, a, a counter move, right? If the, if you cut AJ Store off, he has a hard time adjusting to that. I think the way he mm. finishes in transition is a bit of a red flag. Like there's a lot of transition plays where NBA level athletes, the wings in the college level, are just yamming on everybody. There's a lot of yeah. he gets fouled a lot and doesn't finish, right? Or he gets cut off at the rim a lot in transition, which to me is a, it's weird for an athlete of his caliber because he is very athletic. Um, and then defensively, there's issues there, and there's always this misnomer that you don't play defense in the NBA. People are like. Uh, it doesn't matter in the NBA. They don't care. No, those dudes are incredible. The problem is they're guarding mm. Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. That's why it looks like <laughs> yeah. defense. Like, yeah. if, you, if you don't play defense on the wing in the NBA, that's a problem because you're going to get hunted in mismatches. So I think the whole package is there for him to be an NBA player. I don't think it's ready. But again, like I'm not the decision maker. If there's a team that says, yeah, we believe in it, go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I just... The, the the Johnny Davis, uh, the result of John, Johnny had to go, obviously, because he was a top 10 pick. But just Johnny's lack of ball handling and mm-hmm. consistent shooting has, has caught up to him. Like in the college game, you can get to your spots when you're just a superior athlete than just about everybody you play against. But in the NBA, yeah, yeah a 6'4, six, 6'5 six, shooting guard with not the tightest of handles like Johnny. <laughs> then, you know, and who can't really shoot. So they can say off of you and you don't have good handles. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's not the best combination, unfortunately, for Johnny. So, um, no, and I would yeah, I think I, that Davis actually has a tighter handle than Store, right? And, and still struggles at the NBA level. And, and I, neither guy, like, with the handles is just fluid enough yet. Where, mm-hmm. like, Alondo Tucker was the same way. Like, he is, that was his biggest problem. Like, he 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 was a guy who just got to a spot at will in college, but his handles and his shot wasn't good enough. So, and I think I really think Store could come back and put himself in in a Terrence Shannon or, or kind of follow the Shannon or connect, you know, take over, enjoy one more year of college if that's something you want to do. But yeah, definitely definitely test the waters, and you never know. I guarantee he's going to jump forty inches. You know, he, he's going to like athleticism wise, he'll measure out well. I don't know if he 
is the six seven height that he's listed on on the roster. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Like from a, from an athletic standpoint, he'll test out well. There's other drills they do though that are really important. Like the scouts are looking at your your cone agility. That that's yeah. an indicator of how well you're going to guard on the perimeter. I'm kind of curious where yeah. you grade out on that because I'll give you a quick example. I mean, I'm a Suns fan, you know, but like Devin Booker isn't a great vertical athlete, but he led the combine, I believe, his year in the cone agility drills. I right? so know that. That that's an element of being able to get by people, it's quickness stuff. I'm curious where he'd be on that. Like, he's a good enough athlete, though. But I don't think the carrying skill set around him is quite there. And I, with NIL being a thing, I would be – I'll say this. I'd be surprised if he if he makes a jump. All right. And uh, last question, uh, just before we go to a rapid fire round. Um, how, are you, so you've been following Badger basketball your whole life? hmm Okay. So which team do you think was better at their peak? You know, we're going to go into the deep memory bank, young fans. You're probably not going to be able to participate in this one. But which team was better at their peak? 06, 07 with the fifth year Tucker, you know, Cam Taylor, Flowers, Butch, or 14, 15. And and before you answer this, the reason I ask this is because don't forget about that 06, 07 team before Butch Mm -hmm. dislocated or busted up his elbow. They were number one in the country in the month of February where there were two other great teams where like real quickly, like I consider a great team was just on their own Island dominant. I like Baylor a few years ago, they were clearly the best team in college basketball. Um, so just a team. And I think in 14, 15, there was a few teams that were just on their own Island, but in 06, 07 with the Mike Conley, mm-hmm. Greg Oden led Ohio state team. They were number one. And, uh, you had the Florida team with the 20 NBA players on it, you know, Al Horford, yeah, yeah. Uh, Joakim Noah, Corey Brewer. Um, wh- which team do you think was better? Not greater. Which team do you think was better? Like if, if they played each other, who would win? At their peak, yeah. First of all, I would, I would mortgage the house to see that game if they played. <laughs> um, so Flowers, really quick, Flowers is one of my all-time favorite Badgers. I, I loved, loved Flowers' game. Incredibly heady. I still think the 14-15 team is better. I think they present more issues to guard. I, I really do. I think there's less soft spots on that that offense to, that you have to game plan against. Um, legitimately, Kaminsky is is impossible to game plan against at the college level, right? And then you put shooters around him. Um, I, I think that team's better. That team also had a really good bench. I'm trying. Who who else was on that 6 07 bench? Um, well, you had a freshman Trayvon Hughes. You yeah. had Marcus Landry off the bench. Uh, freshman uh, Jason yeah. Mohannon. Joe Krabenhoff. Um, I don't. I would, you know what I would do? My strategy: I would put Marcus Landry in at center and have him guard Frank the Tank, kind of like Brandon Dawson did. Yeah, and he did a decent job of the Big Ten championship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's things you can do with against Frank. Um, I still. Feel but you're like not gonna that, stop him. No, I still feel like that 14-15 team was better. I, I really think that team was better. Um, you're not wrong. I, I don't think the gap is as big as people would think, right? When you just say it out loud, I think, oh. Yeah, it's probably closer than people think, but uh, I think the the top end talent on that fourteen fifteen team is better, and I, I think I do like the bench a little bit more. With guys like Duye coming off the bench um, gives you more versatility in shooting. I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna go fourteen fifteen. It's a great question though. Okay, okay. Uh, on the bench, on the bench, I, I respectfully disagree there. Hi, uh, Duye. If you look at the entirety of his season versus like what Landry could do, like I'm. I'm rocking with 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 Landry and the the raw talent you had of Jabo and 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 Trayvon Hughes, um, and then but Jabo didn't yeah, play I, much I think, on that team, right? Like I don't. They like... had Steensma. You had Steensma. Yeah, no, he didn't play a ton, but you had Steensma as well. Don't forget you had Steensma coming off the bench. Brian Butch, Jason Chapel was there, um, but you had Steensma, a future yeah. NBA player. Yeah, who, um, who seems like he played more in the NBA than in college, by the way. Oh, no doubt. Which is yeah, he, he didn't fit in well at Wisconsin where you can't no. leave your defender and block shots because he was no. the block king, but he, you can't leave your guy and help and block a shot. You got to stay on the ground. But, yeah, I'm going to get you out of here. Rapid fire round, and then let's, let's get you out of here. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. I, I've had a blast talking some hoops with you. Thanks, man. So. It, was, it was awesome to be here. I really appreciate it. All right, let's go. Uh, favorite Badger basketball player of all time? Um, gosh, Michael Flowers. Okay. Most underrated Badger basketball player of all time. Oh, great one. Oh, man. Most underrated basketball player of all time. Badger basketball player of all time. I'm going to say the first one that comes to my mind. Gosh, I almost want to say Michael Flowers again, but I, I won't. That, that's, that's I was thinking that. Yeah, that's cheating in a way. Um, 
You know, Marcus Landry's a really good one. Um, God, these are great questions. You know, I'm going to go with Trayvon Hughes. I really like Trayvon Hughes. I don't think he gets his due when you go back and look at Badger's point guards. Really tough physical player. Um, I like the the energy he played with, getting the paint almost at ease. I'm going to go with Trayvon Hughes, but I bet you in five minutes I'm going to think of a better answer. <laughs> Favorite basketball player of all time? Oh, for me, it's it's Nash of all time. Yeah, easy. Right. Uh, who is the best basketball player in the world right now? Jokic. Uh, dogs or cats? Oh, dogs. That's not even close. Yeah, cats are the worst. <laughs> right answer. Favorite food? Uh, pasta. Anything fettuccine Alfredo. Um, yeah, let's go. Favorite holiday? Christmas. No, not close. Favorite movie? Um, my first one answer is Tombstone. Uh, the okay. Doc Holiday, you know, um, incredible movie, incredible cast. I could almost quote it line for line when I was younger. Uh, that's where I'm going to go with, but I have tons of movies I like. Tombstone is the first one that comes to mind, though. Okay. MJ or LeBron? MJ. Uh, although, really quick, LeBron gets way more hate than he deserves. Like, I know this is rapid fire, but I'll die on this hill. LeBron is literally <laughs> what most people want their superstars to be. Like, good teammate, makes people better, never gets hurt, makes the right pass. Like, the the whole team-up thing. You know what I do when I go to the playground every single time playing hoops? I pick the best players on my team, too. Like, and if you tell me <laughs> I go to Miami to play instead of Cleveland – like so but it's mj like it's 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 mj but lebron gets way more criticism than in my opinion he deserves from from casuals okay last two college basketball or college football mm. regular season college football postseason college basketball can i do that uh, let's do it you got it and then last one for you how many games will wisconsin win in the next three crystal ball oh gosh oh uh. I would have said two before yesterday's game. I feel like I'm saying one now, and that sucks, but I think it's one. All right, that is Ryan from Locked on Badgers. Ryan, thank you so much again, and, yeah, looking forward to staying connected along the way. Dude, I think, um, dude, I appreciate it so much. You do great work. Um, yeah, thanks for reaching out. Let's do it again.